Then departing from him, I spoke to them all together. And they all became terrified and trembled, beseeching me to write for them a memorial of supplication that they might obtain forgiveness. And that I might make the memorial of their prayer ascend up before the God of heaven, because they could not themselves thenceforward address him, nor raise up their eyes to heaven on account of the disgraceful offense for which they were judged. Then I wrote a memorial of their prayer and supplications for their spirits, for everything which they had done, and for the subject of their entreaty, that they might obtain remission and rest. Proceeding on, I continued over the waters of Don Badan, which is on the right, to the west of Arman, reading the memorial of their prayers until I fell asleep. And behold, a dream came to me, and visions appeared above me. I fell down and saw a vision of punishment, that I might relate it to the sons of heaven and reprove them. When I awoke, I went to them. All being collected together, stood weeping in Albel Seyal, which is situated between Libanos and Sinasir, with their faces veiled. I related in their presence all the visions which I had seen in my dream, and began to utter these words of righteousness, reproving the watchers of heaven. This is the book of the word of righteousness, and of the reproof of the watchers who belong to the world, according to that which he, who is holy and great, commanded in the vision. I perceived in my dreams that I was now speaking with the tongue of flesh, and with my breath, which the mighty one has put into the mouth of men, that they might converse with it, and understand with the heart, as he has created and given to men the power of comprehending the word of understanding, so has he created and gives to me the power of reproving the watchers, the offspring of heaven. I have written your petition, and in my vision it has been shown me that what you request will not be granted you as long as the world endures. Judgment has been passed upon you. Your request will not be granted you. From this time forward, never shall you ascend into heaven. He has said that on the earth he will bind you as long as the world endures. But before these things, you should behold the destruction of your beloved sons. You shall not possess them. But they shall fall before you by the sword. Neither shall you entreat for them, nor for yourselves, but you shall weep and supplicate in silence the words of the book which I wrote. A vision thus appeared to me. Behold, in that vision clouds and a mist invited me, agitated stars and flashes of lightning impelled and pressed me forwards, while winds in the vision assisted my flight, accelerating my progress. They elevated me aloft to heaven. I proceeded until I arrived at a wall built with stones of crystal. A vibrating flame surrounded it, which began to strike me with terror. Into this vibrating flame I entered and drew nigh to a spacious habitation built also with stones of crystal. Its walls, too, as well as pavement, were formed with stones of crystal, and crystal likewise was the ground. Its roof had the appearance of agitated stars and flashes of lightning, and among them a cherubim of fire and a stormy sky. A flame burned around its walls and its portal blazed with fire. When I entered into this dwelling, it was hot as fire and cold as ice. No trace of delight or of life was there. Terror overwhelmed me and a fearful shaking seized me. Violently agitated and trembling, I fell upon my face. In the vision, I looked. And behold, there was another habitation, more spacious than the former, every entrance to which was open before me, erected in the midst of vibrating flame. So greatly did it exceed, excel in all points, in glory, in magnificence, and in magnitude, that it is impossible to describe to you either the splendor or the extent of it. Its floor was on fire, above were lightnings and agitated stars, while its roof exhibited a blazing fire. Attentively I surveyed, surveyed it and saw that it was contained 
saw that it contained an exalted throne, the appearance of which was like that of frost, while its circumference resembled the orb of the brilliant sun, and there was the voice of Cherubim. From underneath this mighty throne, rivers of flaming fire issued. To look upon it was impossible. One great and glory sat upon it, whose robe was brighter than the sun and whiter than snow. No angel was capable of penetrating to view the face of him, the glorious and the effulgent. Nor could any mortal behold him. A fire was flaming around him. The fire also of great extent continued to rise up before him, so that no one of those who surrounded him was capable of approaching him among the myriads of myriads who were before him. To him holy consultation was needless, yet did not the sanctified who were near him depart far from him, either by night or by day, nor were they removed from him. I also was so far advanced with a veil on my face and trembling. Then the Lord, with his own mouth, called me, saying, Approach hither, Enoch, at my holy word. And he raised me up, making me draw near even to the entrance. My eyes were directed to the ground. Then addressing me, he spoke and said, Here, neither be afraid, O righteous Enoch, thou scribe of righteousness. Approach hither and hear my voice. Go say to the watchers of heaven, who have sent thee to pray for them, You ought to pray for men, not men for you. Wherefore have you forsaken the lofty and holy heaven, which endures forever? and have lain with women, and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men, taken to yourselves wives, have acted like the sons of earth, and have begotten an impious offspring. You being spiritual, holy, and possessing a life which is eternal, have polluted yourselves with women, have begotten in carnal blood, have lusted in the blood of men, and have done as those who are flesh and blood do. These, however, die and perish. Therefore have I given to them wives that they, may, they might cohabitate with them, that sons might be born of them, and this might be transacted upon earth. But you, from the beginning, were made spiritual, possessing a life which is eternal, not subject to death forever. Therefore I made not wives for you, because, being spiritual, your dwelling is in heaven. Now the giants who have been born of spirit and flesh shall be called upon earth evil spirits. That's where evil spirits come from. They are a disembodied giant body, and the spirit roams forever. And on earth shall be their habitation. Evil spirits shall proceed from their flesh, because they were created from above. From the holy watchers was their beginning and primary foundation. Evil spirits shall they be upon earth, and the spirits of the wicked shall they be called. The habitation of the spirits of heaven shall be in heaven, but upon earth shall be the habitation of terrestrial spirits who are born on earth. The spirits of the giants shall be like clouds which shall oppress, corrupt, fall, contend, and bruise upon earth. They shall cause lamentation. No food shall they eat, and they shall be thirsty. They shall be concealed shall not rise up against the sons of men and against women, for they come forth during the days of slaughter and destruction. And as to the death of the giants, wheresoever their spirits depart from their bodies, let their flesh, that which is perishable, be without judgment. Thus shall they perish until the day of the great consummation of the great world. A destruction shall take place of the watchers and the impious. And now the watchers who have sent thee to pray for them who is in the beginning were in heaven. Say, in heaven have you been. Secret things, however, have not been manifested to you. Yet have you known a reprobated mystery. And this you have related to women in the hardness of your heart. By that mystery have women and mankind multiplied evils upon the earth. Say to them, Never, therefore, shall you obtain peace. They raised me up into a certain place, 
for there was the appearance of a burning fire. And when they pleased, they assumed the likeness of men. It carried me to a lofty spot, to a mountain, the top of which reached to heaven. And I beheld the receptacles of light and of thunder and at the extremities of the place where it was deepest. There was a bow of fire and arrows in their quiver and a sword of fire and every species of lightning. And they elevated me to a babbling stream. Bobbling stream? And to a fire in the west which received all the setting of the sun. I came to a river of fire which flowed like water and emptied itself into the great sea westwards. I saw every large river until I arrived at the great darkness. I went to where all the flesh migrate, and I beheld the mountains of the glooms of the gloom, which constitutes winter, and the place from which issues the water in every abyss. I also saw the mouths of all the rivers in the world and the mouths of the deep. I also saw. I then surveyed the receptacles of all the winds, perceiving that they contributed to adorn the whole creation preserve the foundation of the earth. I surveyed the stone which supports the corners of the earth. I also beheld the four winds which bear up the earth in the firmament of heaven. And I beheld the winds occupying the exalted sky, arising in the midst of heaven and of earth and constituting the pillars of heaven. I saw the winds which turned the sky, which caused the orb of the sun and all the stars to set. And over the earth I saw the winds which support the clouds. I saw the path of the angels. I perceived at the extremity of the earth the firmament of heaven above it. Then I passed on towards the south, where burnt, both by day and night, six mountains formed of glorious stones, three towards the east and three towards the south. Those which were towards the east were of a variegated stone, one of which was margarite and another of antimony. Those towards the south were of red stone. The middle one reached to heaven like the throne of God, a throne comprised of alabaster, the top of which was of sapphire. I saw, too, a blazing fire hanging over all the mountains. And there I saw a place on the other side of an extended territory where waters were collected. I likewise beheld terrestrial fountains deep in the fiery column of heaven. And in the column of heaven I beheld fires which ascended without number, but neither on high nor into the deep. Over these fountains I also I perceived a place which had neither the firmament of heaven above it nor the solid ground underneath of it. Neither was there water above it nor anything on wing but the spot was desolate. And there I beheld seven stars, like great blazing mountains and like spirits entreating me. Then the angel said, This place, until the consummation of heaven and earth, will be the prison of the stars and the host of heaven. Now you remember, this is an angel saying it's a prison of the stars. So, you know, these guys, these bad angels are being imprisoned. I want you to think about what, what is being said here. The stars which roll over the fire are those which transgressed the commandment of God before their time arrived. For they came not in their proper season. Therefore was he offended with them and bound them until the period of the consummation of their crimes in the secret year. And we will begin a new part. I believe I'm running low on time. I'll have this up. And I'll be right back.